Fletcher and I help artists to find their way creatively. One of the most common things people say to me is, ah, oh, but you have all that lovely space and I don't have any space. I do have a nice space and I'm very thankful to have it. I'm going to show you around my space, but I'm also going to show you where else I used to work before I was lucky enough to have this space. Because we are not like put down on this earth, usually given our own artist studio. We work our way towards that. And I know I certainly have. So let me show you around what I have now and how it's set up. And then I can also show you what I used to have. So my current space is out here in my garden. It's actually just a garden building, like a shed, but it's built onto what was a patio. But on the inside, my wonderful neighbor is a builder, built a shell on the building. So it actually is fully insulated, has a proper roof, has these skylights. But this is it. Now I am bringing you in with absolutely no tidying up. So I want to show you the reality. So uh, I have tripods and things around for filming. I have a sink. I keep my paints in these things, which are Ikea trolleys. And I have two of them. So it's all plumbed in, which is really handy. I keep extra brushes here. This is built onto the wall. It's made out of plywood. And it comes out at a slight angle, as you can see, just making it easier to work on than if it was right flat to the wall. And it's plywood, but I put some cork tiles on it. Can you just see the lines there? That is brown cork, which I've painted white. They're just stuck on. The cork tiles come with sticky stuff that adheres to the wood. And this allows me to work on drawings and pin drawings to this wall. Over here is another uh, piece of ply, very thick plywood that comes out from the wall at an angle and it's actually braced behind, you can see, with pieces of wood that hold it out at an angle. Again, makes it more comfortable. This doesn't have cork. This is just wood painted white. Here are some screws that I'm hanging my paintings from. I'll show you. So I have this instead of an easel. So the screws are spaced in my case, I don't know, about eight inches apart. And then the panels that I work on have these cradles on the back. So then that just hangs on there and I can work directly on the wall. And this is the setup that I really like. And this whole wall of my studio is a false wall made up of sheets of plywood. Up above, we have a shelf. The reason we built the shelf in is that under here, is lighting that goes all the way along so I can light just my painting wall if I want to. This painting table, it's actually an Ikea dining table that I had in the garage. And we put a base on it with plywood so that I can store things underneath. Storage is always our biggest problem, isn't it? And I can use the surface. Now, as you see, this kind of chaos there are collage papers, there are tissues, there are palettes, there are old sketchbooks. It needs a good tidy up. This is generally what it looks like. Uh, stuff on the floor that was left to dry. Uh, this is how my studio usually looks. I've been working a lot with soft pastels, so they're out on the table. Here then I have along this wall, most of this wall is made up of this table, which again, I, I had made for the studio not made out of expensive materials at all, but I had it made so that I can store paper under there. I have drawers which are from Ikea that just slot underneath and those have all my supplies in. Um, pens, colored pencils, all sorts of other drawing materials, oil pastels. And then there was a gap there, but I got this Welsh dresser really cheap on Gumtree. Bought it, painted it white so it fitted in with the room. And it just gives me extra storage for my sketchbooks. As you can see, that's just some of them because many of them are lying around the studio. All my acrylic mediums, some extra collage materials in there that I haven't got room for. 
And then I have some more Ikea shelves under the window that are storing some wooden panels and some, some art books. And then this little drawer, which I had in my garage, and I use this for tubes of paint that I don't, colours that I don't normally use. They're in here if I just want to change. And then I have one other drawer unit, which at the moment is fairly empty. I sorted this out. But in here are some collage papers. Done quite a good job tidying this one up so there's not much in here. The light in here, I've shut these blinds because it's very sunny outside and hot today, but the light comes primarily from these skylights. I have six. Putting those in meant we had to put in a special roof because it just had a shed roof and they wouldn't have been strong enough to support the skylights. And then the skylights have diffusing blinds on so you don't get those shafts of light coming down. I have a notice board over my sink. I just use that for saving scraps of things that mean something or for inspiration, little inspiration pieces on my... And that's basically it. So it's not huge. It is six metres by five metres. And of course I would now like something bigger. And yet that is ridiculous when you see where I used to work. So let's go have a look at it. So we're in my house and this is a little cupboardy room. There's this table built in. The previous owner had uh, an office in here. It is literally just a little cupboard with a tiny window. That's the back wall. These cork tiles I had put on both walls so I could pin just inspiration and general things on there. Now they've become a bit of a dumping ground. This room's become a bit of a dumping ground because it's not big enough really for anything else. But that is where I began painting. So I only had what I could do on that table and you can see all the paint marks still on there. When I wanted to do something large, I came out here and I put the paintings on the grass. I brought out easels out here or I just laid the paintings on the grass and I painted there. Then I'll show you where I went next. You can see the windows up there. Now this is another kind of mishmash room. This is over the garage and was set up as a spare bedroom as it is now but it had a proper bed in it i came in here and with the bed set up i worked in this corner over here where there's now a sideboard and you can see i keep all my panels and all the work in progress in here now but i just worked in that corner and avoided the bed then eventually I replaced the bed with a sofa bed and I started to use the whole room. This was a nice room to work in. I felt so lucky to have the space. But as we do, I outgrew it because of the low ceilings. There's a lot, a lot of the room that I can't really maneuver or work in. That's when I was fortunate enough to be able to build my studio. You can see that as we come out. It's just there behind us. And so from that to this much bigger, taller and lighter space. So as you can see, times have changed. Be encouraged. If I can start in a cupboard, so can you. If you're one of those people who doesn't currently have a workspace. Even prior to the cupboard, what I had was kitchen table and I cleared up every night, but that was in a different house. Once we moved here, I had the cupboard. I do hope you've enjoyed this visit around my studio. Not many people get to see inside where I work, so I hope it's been helpful. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.